Today, I'm gonna to do a long-term review on the Vanquish Phoenix Portal, a very significant vehicle in the RC crawler world. I'm gonna tell you about its unique features. I'm gonna demonstrate them on the trail, and I'll help you make a decision whether it is the right vehicle for you. If you don't know Vanquish, Vanquish is a very high-end company uh, specializing in axles and, and, and machine parts, and they decided to do their own vehicles, and but very expensive, 1,000 bucks, 1,500 bucks. So in this vehicle, what they wanted to do was to bring it down market, reach more people, expose them to the Vanquish brand, and what they have is a $500 kit that you put together yourself. Uh, it comes in this box, really professionally done, uh, so it comes together so easily, even if it's your first, first kit. But what's really interesting is because of supply chain whiplash and whatnot, meaning oversupply now, uh, uh, it's now on sale for $399 uh, at our partner in Amain. So if, the, if this is something you're into, uh, click on the link in the description and it'll help us out. They also have a straight axle version of it now. So um, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot for money and you could go either way now. So as you can see, one of the things I'll track you, attract you to the vehicle right away is the styling. Body is everything. Uh, it's what speaks to us and it looks like an FJ pickup. It doesn't have Toyota badging, but, so, but you can buy these badges uh, easily on eBay or Shapeways and that's what I did. The first feature, so why don't I turn it on so I can, easier, easiest to see. Transmitter. So I'm using a Flysky GT5, one of the best in the business. It's a five channel radio. Also using a Castle Hobbies Copperhead ESC and a Castle Slate motor. I'll have links in the description as well. AGF servos all around. I chose AGF because it's very powerful in the front and half height uh, on, the, on the two features. So just your basic one. So here's your AGF servo action, nice and strong. Cast your castles right here. So, really good modulation, really good adjustability, and a top end that is insane. No, no need for a two speed transmission if you're using brushless because you get the low and the high um, speed. Okay, so what are the two features? So, these, these there's two, there's two uh, servos here that control it. Let me just close this. I'm using a 4S battery by the way you can use 2s 3s or 4s and if you have uh, a, a good esc where you can control the modulation why not go 4s because then you really get the top speed a compromise is usually you'll have less low speed control so you need a better esc so you can uh, adjust that and make sure you have that mo that granularity okay so here are the two features and as you are running i have it on a momentary switch here i think i can hit it with my thumb and click. You notice anything? The rear wheel is locked up. Not moving anymore. And it's not freewheeling, it's completely locked up. Click, now it's moving. You guys know what that's called? That's called dig. Dig is the, the locking, you could do it under power. So, you know, I know the axial, has this on the Capra and I think the SEX 10.3, uh, but they're fairly useless <laughs> because you can't switch the dig under power. You need to unload the drivetrain uh, and then it'll switch. I found out, I hated dig for, uh, for a long time uh, and it's because you can't do it that way. It has to be switchable under power, meaning you, you, you need to have a, a, a good drivetrain and a good servo to be able to do that. So that's the first feature, dig and I'm gonna to demonstrate to you what it does right here. All right, here is a demonstration of DIG in high-speed rallying. We're gonna be having fun. Just lock the rear. Oh, it is a DIG situation. A quick turn. But here's the real usefulness, okay, is right on here. tight situations, you can turn literally on a dime. Instead of doing a three-point turn, yeah, maybe you don't want the deduction in competition no, no, no. or maybe you don't have room oh, you, uh, yeah. you just you just turn so it's pretty cool and here I think it's the most important purpose of dig so here very tough climb I'm trying to go to the right here and I'm trying 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 gassing it gassing it 
nothing's happening, nothing's happening. It's just not able to move itself in this situation. So what I do, so I give it a lot of chances, but I'm gonna lock the rear tires. I'm gonna activate dig any moment now. So here, you can see I really gave it a chance, nothing's happening. And all I do here is lock the dig and then boom now the front is moving can you see that now the front repositions itself and it gives me now I shut dig off because you can't really climb very steep stuff with dig but it's a very valuable repositioning tool and now so now uh, this advantage of dig or a non-advantage is descending so people think oh you can lock the rear wheels you can descend better and you hear that a lot but really it's not an advantage so here there's no dig and here and that was controlled in a very very steep part and here I activate dig and I do have less traction so right there it's sliding when I don't want to because when your tires are locked, right there, it's going sideways as well. Okay, the second feature is pretty cool. So check this out. And then with a switch. Notice that only the rear wheels are turning now. Rear wheel drive, right? Not very useful, but kind of fun little drift action in the uh, in the pavement but here's the real trick I'm doing this under power too and now we have overdrive what is overdrive you will notice that the front tire is spinning faster than the rear 33% faster than the rear okay and you know, something I didn't tell you is on the other setting, it actually has overdrive as well, but very small. So right here, this is 6% overdrive. So it's practically zero. It doesn't really do much. But then, so there you go, 33% overdrive. And right here, I'm gonna demonstrate to you what it does on the trail. Okay, now we're gonna play with overdrive. So first, no overdrive here. And this is the steering radius. It's not bad. You know, very decent. But here with overdrive, the steering radius is tighter. You know, maybe 20% tighter. And as you apply power, um, it has tendency, less tendency to push as well. So it remains tight. So uh, steering radius with high overdrive uh, is definitely better. All thing, all other things being equal. You know, the the the, the steering angle being equal. Okay, so now we're going to go to climbing and what we're able to demonstrate in our lab. So here, uh, no overdrive here, and we do a little power climb. And what you'll notice is there is some tendency for the car to flip. So here, we turn on overdrive and kind of, kind of the same power. Now that one is a little smoother, but with 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 a little bit of boost, as well with high overdrive you have a better chance of success like right there because there's less pushing of the rear tire a little more pulling of the front tire so it's very good for power climbs you know where punch is needed but the other the real opportunity for overdrive is when in very high grip surfaces um, the Overdrive can help you pull yourself. Uh, on low grip surfaces, it's a little tougher because you have a little bit, little bit less climbing traction. You know, when your wheels are not spinning at the same time, you're slipping the rear wheel, so you get a little bit less. So you want high traction climbs uh, for overdrive situations. A disadvantage of high overdrive is you can slip your tires on a side hill, but with a Phoenix, at least you can turn it off if you get in this situation. 
So there's overdrive for you. And what it's, what's really cool is for the first time in history, you have overdrive that's switchable from the remote. I mean, I wish it was zero and 30%, so I could really say, hey, it's zero, nothing. And, but what it does is it allows people to understand what it does uh, and, and see if it makes a difference for their conditions. It doesn't make a difference everywhere. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't prove an advantage everywhere. Uh, but some situations, it really does. And I hope I was able to demonstrate to you on the video what it does. Okay, so steering is deadly accurate. Um, and the drivetrain is so robust. Check this out. There's a bump. By the way, I'm using Boom Racing wheels. Pro-Line Trencher. So the boom racing wheels are very wide and it allows you to, uh, to make your narrow, your normal tires um, wider than they are. So without adding weight, now you have wider tires. Makes your stance wider. So pretty cool. And I think this vehicle, um, you know, I, ha I also have deep dish hubs, high offset, negative offset hubs uh, to make the stance wider. I like it wide because the vehicle with a, with a with a body like this that's fairly heavy, um, you know, ha doesn't have the lowest center of gravity. So you ha how you counter that is with, with a wider vehicle. And you can see in the performance, it does well. So there you go. Um, what do I love about it? It's affordable now, 400 bucks uh, for the kit, and you could have a, a portal version or a straight axle version. So pick your, pick your weapon, choose your poison, the construction is awesome. Uh, performance is great. Yeah, the fact that you have overdrive, selectable, uh, or dig uh, is good. And dig, this dig is usable, so that's good. So I love that, the body, clearances, construction, nothing. <laughs> I feel nothing's gonna break here. Um, very well done. So what don't I like about it? I would say the, uh, the tires, the stock tires, are really uh, a non-starter. Uh, these are what they, they ship. Not the worst in the world, but really it's not deserving of this vehicle. You know, it's, they're too narrow and the rubber is just not gummy enough. They're soft, but they're not, they don't have that good uh, grip to them, tackiness. Another thing is the body. There's something wrong with the initial shipment because you could, as you could see, you know, the, the, the paint is peeling. And we did our job right, you know, we, we, we washed it and we made sure it was dry before we painted with polycarbonate paint, but it still started peeling. All, all three of our vehicles in the crew uh, just did this. So hopefully they fixed that uh, already with the, the prep of their Lexan. And the last issue, I'm not sure, is I feel that there's, a, there's more play here. So I'm gonna hold the, this, one, this other tire. There's more play here than there should be. Um, you know, I, che I checked all my other vehicles, Traxxas, and Axel definitely don't have this much. So I'm not sure what's causing that. Uh, the rear doesn't have as much as much play. You know, play like that kind of uh, delays your 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 acceleration and your your stop and start and stop. So, but overall, you know, it's still a gem. It it it's still a keeper. Um, you know, it's not it's not a LCG vehicle. It's not a straight up crawler. It's somewhere in between. But as you can see, it's so strong and fast and robust that you could rally with it and you could do some really cool uh, crawling with it. Uh, the way we have it set up, uh, again, FlySky GT5, $70 for this. Um, if you're on a budget, just get the steering servo. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, do, do, just lock these two. But, you know, we put some AGF uh, servos on here. Uh, we have a small 4S battery. Uh, this is for really sh uh, short runs, but 4S is super cool uh, using a Copperhead, Castle Creations Copperhead and a Castle Creations Slate motor. But uh, the way this is set up, I don't know. What do you guys think? Not too bad, huh? not too shabby. Thanks a ton.